I saw you tweeted out that you were not going to be coming back uh, for next season. Just what was that decision making process like and and what were some of the factors that went into it for you? So can everyone hear me? Good. Okay. So um, it was a really hard decision for me because I do love softball so much. <clears throat> but I had to think about uh, what my future was going to look like. And um, I felt like God was pushing me in this direction because he has something great planned for me. Um, and I honestly just felt like it was time for me to kind of start this new chapter in my life. Well, I'm going to go ahead with you. What do you think is in the plans, Eli? Or have you decided kind of what's going forward yet if softball at Mizzou is not there? Um, I know that I want to go into coaching. So I'm sending out resumes, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm really excited for that because I've always wanted to coach. And I have a great mentor, Coach Anderson. So um, I'm really excited. Go ahead again, Eric. I guess, Coach, off of that note, just what is Eli meant to the program and to hear you're a good mentor? How are you going to, if she gets into coaching, how are you going to, what advice do you have for her that she can pass on to other softball players? I know she's going to be really successful. I mean, she did an unbelievable job this year with our freshman pitchers. Um, she's been coaching since I've been on the, on the field from day one and, and her ability to be able to recognize and she has an eye for it and she can break it down. Um, she's been tremendous in our camp setting. So I know that she's just going to be, she's going to be very successful wherever she does land. Um, so hopefully she has an opportunity this coming season. If not, I know she has a lot of people in her corner to be able to help her through that. Um, but she's been amazing for this program. I mean, having a senior to come in the role that she did, we had a conversation before the season started um, and it was, you, you're going to be pitching every single day. So get yourself out there and, and mentally prepare yourself that you're going to be, when the game is on the line, I'm coming to you. And, you know, to have that trust in someone is pretty impressive. Tyler Murray, go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, what, after you've had a little bit of time kind of away from uh, the Diamond, what's, what's it been like um, for you and the team now kind of a, a little bit past when things got shut down? What has kind of this time been like for you? You know, it's, it's hard. It's kind of like the same experience we went through when um, the NCAA sanction result was dropped on us. Um, you know, you go through a period of shock and you go through some anger and you mourn together as a team because you're sad that your season ended. Um, you know, we had such a tremendous group this year and we were very successful. So to have something end um, before it's, and when it's not in our control is, is tough to handle. Um, but again, we're all in this together and we're there for one another. So we're communicating, we communicate through GroupMe. Um, we have a Snapchat group that is pretty comical. Um, you know, we try to stay as engaged as we possibly can. Right now is tough because they're getting into finals. So I know that their stress level is pretty high. But again, it's, it's an adjustment for them. Athletes are so competitive and love discipline and love routine. And that's why they're successful. So when you take all those things away from them, I would say that the, the toughest thing for these players has been not having a routine, not being told when they have to get up, go to class, come to practice, all that discipline stuff that's made them so successful. And now they're having to rely on their own self-motivation and self-discipline, which is an adjustment for these kids. Colin, we'll go ahead with you. Hey, Coach. I know you have a, a role in the NFCA and in, in softball leadership in college, and I was just curious. You probably could have made it work because Eli was just a lone senior, but what are some of the things you've heard from maybe other coaches about how, how the roster management is going to look next season? You know, especially with uh, the, some of our SEC opponents, um, some of the rosters are getting as high as 35. Um, some are as low as 24, depending on how many seniors are coming back. So it's, it's having some of those tough conversations. Um, you know, we're in a situation, unfortunately, that Eli's not coming back, so I'm not having those conversations with classes of six or eight. You know, I can't imagine if this was to happen next year where we have 13 juniors. Um, that would have been really, really tough with an incoming class coming in. So 
you know, it, it's, it's coaches being able to be creative, um, athletic departments having to figure out how to finance it. Um, you know, we're in a situation in the SEC that at times we do have the finances that we can be able to accommodate um, all the way through, but there's a lot of, there's 27 mid-major conferences out there that don't have the same resources that we do. So it's, it's really tough on those programs in that athletic department. But at the same time, I'm so proud and grateful that the NCAA did grant that extra year of eligibility. I mean, you, don't, you get four years to be a college athlete. And for that to be taken away from the spring sport athletes, it isn't fair and it's out of their control. So I'm glad they get that year back. Eric, go ahead. You mentioned the differentiation might be 24 to 35. Is fair play an issue? I mean, that's 11 players. That's a whole starting lineup if you really wanted it to be. So, you know, is fair, is fair play between a program who might have 24 compared to 35 a concern in your mind? So we still have roster management within the SEC. Um, Non-conference, you could bring all 35 if you financially wanted to be able to do that. Within the SEC, we have restrictions to our travel party. Um, you can only have 22 right now, 22 eligible players that can compete. When you're home, you could have everybody in the dugout, which obviously gives the home team the advantage to have more bodies and more eyes, um, be able to chart and pick pitches and things like that. But on the road, right now, you're only limited to those 22. So you do still have an even playing field. But now you can be more creative in who those 22 are, and they can change every single series. Go ahead again, Eric. I guess another question for Eli. I mean, the coach said you, you did a good job with the freshman pitchers coming in this year. Just looking to the future for the team, what do you expect to see you know, from the pitching staff and the whole team when, when they get back on the field next year? Oh, they're absolutely going to kill it. I, I saw – in the freshman this year, something that I haven't seen in freshmen in a long time, um, in the pitchers, I guess. And um, they absolutely love the game. And they want to work so hard to be good. And um, I, it makes me really proud to see that because I want to say that that's how I was when I came in. Um, so seeing that in them, it makes me very excited to see what they're going to do. Colin, go ahead. Hey, Kayla. Um, I was just curious, after everything that, that you went through with, with those two surgeries and everything, even in the shortened season, to be named, named an All-American, just what, what was going through your mind when that announcement came out? Um. I was honestly kind of shocked. Like I wasn't really like expecting um, any of that. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, well, like that's kind of cool. But um, I don't know. I kind of went about this season like a lot differently and like took everything that I went through last year and like the things that I learned off the field. And like I was playing for something like so much bigger than just softball. Um, you know, like the accolades are cool and like it's really nice to like get recognized for like your hard work and your success. But in the end of the day, like I'm not playing for that name. I'm not playing for that accolade. Like I'm not going to get frustrated if I don't get that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was kind of like a shock to me, but it was also like really cool because. Yes, a small part of me, like it did validate like, OK, like, I made it, I came back, and, like, I did what I wanted to do, and, like, I was successful with my goals, even in the short amount of time that we had, but, yeah. Tyler, go ahead. Hey, Kayla, so kind of off that tangent there, you know, you've battled through a lot of stuff to get back to the diamond, um, back on the softball field. How difficult was this for you having to, again, step away, and it's not really in your control? Um, it was tough, but I feel like I'm kind of like one step ahead of like some people, like I, I've been through that. Um, and obviously like this is in completely different circumstances than an injury, but I've had that feeling of like having something taken away from you really out of your control. So, um, I mean, things happen and you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and appreciate the time that you did get to play um, and look back on that aspect of it and like focus on that and like reevaluate, okay, in these five, six weeks, like what did I do? What can I do? And now what can I do to get better for this next time? And 
I feel like it's a good learning lesson for a lot of people because when you do have something that's taken away from you out of your control, like when you do get the chance to play again, regardless if it's because of this situation and injury, you know, something else, like you appreciate the time you do get to play so much more. And I think as a growing aspect, that's going to be really good for our team. Um, is like having those, having those times to face adversity so you can learn to appreciate the game that much more and not take things for granted and play every play like it's going to be your last one. So, Eric, go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, I have to ask, is there any movement from the NCAA in terms of you guys being eligible for the postseason in 2021? Oh, uh, you know, you're hearing as much as I am. Um, you know, I think the NCAA pretty much has their hands full right now with a lot of other decision making. And, uh, you know, we're just sitting and waiting. Okay. You know, can I, can I make a comment about Kayla? Am I allowed to do that without yes. a question being asked? <laughs> um, you know, I, I, looking back at what Kayla was to accomplish, it, I, have to, I have to make a comment about the medical staff and the doctors that performed two surgeries and the therapists and our athletic trainers at Mizzou. Um, you know, she had a major, major surgery where they removed a rib and muscles in her neck and came back from that and then had another surgery where she had to have a nerve moved in her arm. And how many athletes at any level are able to come back in the period of time that she did and then being able to perform even better than she was before her injury. Um, that's remarkable. And that just shows you the, the commitment that our staff had, um, you know, our athletic department, and then also the commitment that Kayla had to get her body in the position that she was able to compete at the highest level of Division I softball. 